Ah, oh, hello, a very good evening to you. It's me, it's Scotty McClue. It's that time again, of course. And here we are live on Facebook Live, the world's top broadcast platform, the one everybody's watching, the one everybody's talking about, the one everyone is listening to. I'm Scotty McClue, and it's lovely to have you with me tonight. It's lovely for me, Scotty McClue, to be with you. So dinky do. We've only got one hour tonight, of course, one hour of superb scintillating information, education, and entertainment. You are responsible for all of that, and I am here to be with you. So we'll have a fantastic time, of course. For those of you who are alien life forms from another planet and you've never ever seen me before, a very good evening to you, Frank McElroy is uh, saying good evening and dinky do Scotty now uh, thank you for all your lovely messages but I would like to try and do some subject work tonight so we'll have a good old chat so if you'd like to make comments along the way I will read out your comments that will be fantastic we have a fine fine audience watching right now and that's absolutely great I hope you liked the promo earlier I see a thousand of you have had a look at that already that's marvelous and of course, hi Scotty from Uphall International Space Station, says David Gardner. Excellent evening, Scotty Louise Seven. Hi Scotty, did you like my show? I hope you're doing well. Louise does a show on uh, Black Diamond FM Radio. So there we are. Douglas William Bryce is watching. John Douglas has shared the video. And Mick McFarlane says, good evening, Scotty. Dinky do. Now, lots to talk about tonight. And as I say, it's a little time to do it in because an hour is nothing. It will pass in a flash. It will disappear so quickly. And there's two things I would quite like to touch on tonight. I don't know if you're aware of the comments made by the London Mayor Sadiq Khan. The gist of it, the overriding gist of his comments at the Labour conference were that um, if you wish independence for Scotland, then you are a racist. That's the sort of overriding view that he was trying to get across there. Now, obviously the complete antithesis of that is true. There is nothing racist about Scots and about uh, our Scottish politics, and there never has been so. All I can say is I would imagine that he meant all of these comments. One has to assume that, because here we have a very intelligent man, and um, he would know what he wanted to say. And what he has said there is that uh, people who are seeking self-determination in Scotland are racists. I disagree with that thoroughly, and I would like to hear your comments on it as well. Sorry, I'll just disappear now and again. I will be roasting hot in here, I can tell you. So there we are, roasting hot in here, so I will disappear now and again for some light refreshment. Now, um, lots and lots and lots of you are sharing the video. We will have share points as the evening goes on, probably up to about half a dozen share points. Anything. You can find on the internet with Scotty McClue on it. Share it and share it and share it. Very, very important because what we're doing, folks, we're building here a massive talk show. We're building the people's program. Now, although it's absolutely free to air and won't cost you a bean, I would like you to consider GoFunding me. I've opened a GoFundMe page. There's £280 in it. And once we get the word out there, I'm looking for about £5 million. It's only been open for 28 days, and we've already got £280. But I would like every single one of you to consider opening your wallet for maybe a pound, £5, £10, £20, whatever suits you. If you really genuinely have nothing to offer, then what I would suggest you do is go on the link anyway and share it on Facebook and Twitter. You'll see it says share this page on Facebook and Twitter. So the link is gofundme.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClue. All right, Julianne Scott's just shared it. Get her bonnet off, man. Get her bonnet off then, man, says Gordon Wilson. Don't know what he's talking about. Good evening, Scotty. What's your take on single mothers these days? Well, everybody knows my take on them. But 
I would like to talk about these comments by Sadiq Khan, the London Mayor, about Scots being racist, because of course there is not a jot or scintilla of truth in that. So there we are, that's what I'm thinking there. And um, no sound, says Lynn K. Lynn, that must be your machinery, because there's plenty of sound here. McClure's pie is warm, says Eric. Excellent stuff, very, very good indeed. Also, I would like to talk about the BBC, the British Broadcasting Corporation. The BBC in Scotland has launched, or will be launching, has said it will be launching, a new television channel. So there we are. Now, everybody knows that the BBC did not have a terribly good time during the um, independence referendum, right? They didn't get themselves a very good name for non-bias. Now, of course, in their name is the British Broadcasting Corporation. Now, Britain, as we know, is not a country. Scotland is a country. England is a country. Northern Ireland is a country. Ireland is a country. Wales is a country. So you have all that Britain is an amalgam. And the British Broadcasting Corporation takes about £320 million from Scotland uh, uh, every year per annum. So there you are. And uh, I'm thinking, right, okay, fair enough. We're not all, uh, you know, that's, uh, the, you know, we do like to pay. We like to pay for our entertainment. But the point I'm making, this new channel, would we not be better starting again with the Scottish Broadcasting Company or the Scottish Broadcasting Corporation and they run Scottish Broadcasting? Also, the BBC has refused to do a six o'clock Scottish news. Now, I'm seriously considering doing that for you myself. So if you like, if we can get the funding and set that up, that would be excellent. Jimmy Ann Scott, do you watch the rugby, Scotty? Yes, of course I do. Uh, John Toms is watching. Brilliant. Lovely to have you with us. Louise Riss says garbage. Um, oh no, that's somebody telling her that she's talking nonsense. So there we are. Uh, Fiona Cunningham's watching. Thank you very much. Charlie Farley, 100% right, Scotty. So let's have your views on that. Mike Henfield is watching. Mike Henfield, dinky do, one of the finest radio managing directors and journalists I have ever worked with. Uh, time for a share, Scotty. Tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10. Tell everyone about this program, guys. The promos are uploaded onto YouTube, so you'll get them uploaded onto YouTube, and that would be fantastic. The Scots were the Rottweilers of the Empire, says Sandy Howden. You're quite right, Sandy. The Scots actually ran the Empire. And the reason the Scots are so good at running things is because they don't really subscribe to the class system. So there's nobody saying, you can't come in here. You're different to me. We're all Jock Tamsons Burns. Joanna K. Jackson's watching in Maine in the USA. Dinky do to you, Joanna K. Lovely to have you with us. And uh, is that a picture of you you have in the wall, Scotty? Uh, yes, it is. I'll let you see it. There's that one. And there's one that way. There's another one there with the dog. With old Lord Wreath, the dog. How fantastic was that? Never missed a show, that dog, in 13 years. The BBC has always shown negativity towards Scotland, says Craig Spain. Well, I don't know that it's always shown negativity, but what I will say, my experience, and remember experience comes from good, sorry, I should say good decisions come from experience, and experience comes from bad decisions. As my grandfather used to say, experience is a great teacher, but he asks a high price. Now, I've made some pretty good decisions in my life, I made one decision that I was not happy with, and um, I met one bad person, one bad person, and they know who they are, one bad man, and that was that. Uh, so there you are. The Bunnets song your turnips, says Hector Magubligan. Mark Crudel's watching Dinky Doo to you, Mark. Lovely to have you with us. So what I would like to do tonight, guys, instead of just shouting out all your names, is move the program on a little bit. We've now been doing the program. This is our 23rd program. How good is that? 23 programs. And uh, evening, Scotty boy. Have no regrets, says Mark. I don't have any regrets. Je regrette rien, Mark. 
Uh, good evening, Scotty. This is David Lee Weir. Mary Cart is watching. Hugh Miller's watching. How marvellous. Lovely to have you all with us. So, I would like to get the discussion going. So, if you've got any views on the new BBC channel, do please let me know. Also, if you have views on what the London Mayor said about the Scots and those who wish independence and self-determination. Because independence is really only a change of management. So it's passing from one branch of British government to another branch of British government. It's going from Westminster to Holyrood. And that's all it is. So there's actually no need for all this. And it's actually an economic decision. We're talking economics here. Uh, so there we are, marvellous. A shout out to Springbun, Scotty. We love you. How wonderful. This is amazing. Excuse me a wee second. I shall just disappear again and uh, get sorted out. There we go. Just um, what I'm doing there, guys, is giving myself a wee bit of a mop down because it's absolutely roasting in here tonight. I think it must be the weather. The revolution will not be televised, Scotty, says Ian Walker. A wee tune from your squeeze box would be brought, says Jim Stephen Gibb. Absolutely, Jim Stephen Gibb. We will have a tune from the squeeze box, but I want to try and stay on topic tonight. So I'm quite interested in getting uh, things going. Mark Nichols says, Dinky do, my man. Cheers. The weather's vile. Uh, I, uh, I would definitely vote yes, then, says Louise Sullivan. I think everybody should vote yes. I don't know why we have unionist parties in a Scottish Parliament. It doesn't make any sense. Every right-thinking Scottish person should be voting for Scotland, for what's best for Scotland. And what's best for Scotland economically is independence. Gives a tune in the box, Scotty, says Alex Duff. Right, I will. No smoking, says Hector McGibbigan. Quite right. British is not Scottish. No. British, it's, it's, I mean, you can't compare, you're comparing different things, apples and pears, because you can't really compare them. Britain is not a country. Scotland is a country. So there we are. Nice lamp, Scotty. Is that from, from Ikea? Oops, no advertising. No, no, it's not from Ikea. It's from my cousin. Uh, why do we have Scottish nationalists in Westminster, says Louis? That's because we have, at the moment, a British government, and Scotland is a very powerful part of Britain. So it should be represented by its elected representatives, 56 of them, which we have in Westminster, Louis. And you should know that, because you're a clever man. Uh, so there we are. The first London mayor was a Scot for Kilmarnock says Ian Walker. Absolutely, how marvellous stuff. Scots everywhere. Uh, but what's happened is I think Labour are taking low blows and cheap shots at an excellent Scottish administration. I mean, where, apart from Scotland, have you ever heard NMD say how good the politicians are? Usually it's moan, 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 but not in Scotland. We love our politicians in Scotland and we have terrific respect for them and we have terrific respect for everyone so Scotland I think what's causing the confusion there is a national party in England and they are right wing right the the Scottish National Party is a left of center party that cares deeply for people throughout the world that's the difference. And I think they can't get their head round that. We're better together, says Daniel Joseph. No, Daniel, we are most certainly not better together. So whoever's fed that into your head, you should just completely detach yourself from them. There's nothing better together. We've seen that over 310 years, right? Now, there have been times when we've worked well together, but we are most certainly nowadays not better together. Scotland sends £40 billion per annum to subsidise the UK. We need that money in Scotland. Our children are starving and we need to feed them. All right? So we should hang on to that levy. Any talk of black holes, £14 billion, £19 billion down, we just hang on to the levy and cover that. And trust me, if we were actually costing Westminster, they would have dropped us like a hot tatty 300 years ago. 
Scotty, you should be on the new BBC Scotland channel. Give us a show for some decent debate for a change and try and bring a bit of impartiality to the broadcaster, says Andy McCrory. Absolutely, Andy. What I'm telling you here is pure fact. So there we are. Uh, Louis Faber, if we're supposedly better together, then we should be in the UK Parliament. Yes, we're not better together. And that's an economic fact. Quite right, John Toms. Is it worth it, Scotty? A Scottish Broadcasting Corporation is a far better idea, says Dave Helmsley. See more. See what it says, see more. It's very difficult. At least if Scotland... Uh, sorry, is it worth it, Scotty? A better idea. I've met a few bad people, most of them female. At least if Scotland does manage to gain independence, the transition would be managed better under Theresa May and Nicola Sturgeon than the previous Westminster administration. Well, it's just a question of a handover. Even English Labour members think Kezia Dugdale is an embarrassment, says Val Hansen. Uh, yes, well, I think, yes. I, I'm not sure that uh, she was the best candidate there, but there we are. Um, Carol McNamara's watching. Dinky-doo to you, Carol McNamara. Very intelligent lady. Welsh, not British, and a citizen in a lush country called Scotland, says Luke Jones. Uh, bedroom tax, food banks, what's going on with the government? You like Tories, Scotty? No, I mean, I like everyone, but I'm afraid the Tory party have not acquitted themselves well over the last few years. So there you go. And uh, I used to be a staunch unionist until the 1st of May 1997, when Mr Blair took over, and I realised that the Labour Party that had been staggering on, uh, if it wasn't for the likes of John Smith, it would never have made it till 1997. And that was virtually the end of the Labour Party as we know it. Hi, Scotty, says Carol. Hi, Carol. Dinky-doo to you, my darling. Uh, ah, if we're better together... Why aren't we better together already, says Charlie Fanny? Exactly, Charlie. We've had 310 years to rehearse being better together. And no evidence of it. So, sorry, I've got to go on the evidence. Uh, loved John Sm Smoth. Loved John Smith, says Val. Yes, John was from Argyle. And as a student, John used to go back to Argyle. And he would go on board the Puffers. And I used to go on board the Puffers as well as a youngster. And I know that somebody who appreciates the life on the Puffer would make a very, very good Prime Minister. So there you are. Sadly, he didn't live long enough. <coughs> Pardon me. £320 million paid to the BBC from Scotland. And only £84 million spent in Scotland. We are subsidising English television, says Colin Budge. Well, we will be subsidising network television. Good to see Fiona Graham here, a great lady. Yes, absolutely. And don't you think that Corbyn's comments about a hard border are nothing short of racism? Yes, there's not going to be any hard border from the Scottish part. If you've ever been over to Ireland, there's no hard border there. You can drive back and forward as much as you like. Nobody's bothered. Uh, Luxembourg, Austria, Liechtenstein are independent. Why do all the MPs in Westminster think we can't govern ourselves? It's a form of racism by English MPs. I don't think the MPs in Westminster do think that we can't govern ourselves. The thing is, we can govern ourselves extremely well, and I think they know that. And the problem is, if Scotland goes, how do they control the vast wealth that Scotland has? Because we'll be spending it on our bills. We'll be spending it on eradicating the food banks. I know the work of the food banks is wonderful, but we want to be doing them out of a job. So there you are. Nice tie, Scotty, says Derek Cloth. Thank you, Derek. We touch of the polka dot there. Depends what registration plate you use in Ireland, says Louis Faber. Uh, I don't know where you're coming from, Louis. I have travelled right throughout Ireland with um, a British personalised registration, and uh, I have never, ever had a problem. They did spot stop me to see if my uh, car was diesel. Um, they obviously were worried about uh, about diesel smuggling. Um, so there we are. And uh, the days off see Scott Fam and programming your show, says Dick Reed. I don't know what he said there. Read that again, Derek, and send me it back again. So there we are. Now, what time we got? My goodness me, we've already passed a share point. 
Let's get sharing, folks. Share, 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 share. And when this video stops going live at 11 o'clock, then keep sharing it all week so that everybody gets to share it because you've got to build and build and build an audience. Facebook is a massive, massive worldwide platform. And that's the lovely thing about it. We are global, but we've got to tell everybody that we're here. We've got to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 about Scotty McClure live on Sunday night. Dinky do just for you. BBC, pa, I'd rather give £150 to you than to a BBC license, says Angie Thompson. I know Angie, everybody would. Scott FM, Beat FM, says Deck. Excellent. Margaret says, Shared Scotty. So there we go. Good for you, Margaret. Thank you very much. And two lovely kisses. Thank you to everyone who has shared the video. It's quite fantastic. Now, just two seconds. Roasting hot in here today. Oh, oh, the heat. Honestly, no do anything like it. There we are. And of course, I maybe didn't do the wisest thing. I got into the shower just before. <laughs> so there you go. Scotland won the rugby, Scotty, with a good feeling. Yes, and did you see that Nicola had sent commiserations to uh, to the Welsh minister? I thought that was lovely. I thought that was a, a lovely, lovely touch. I hope Sadiq sa can. I hope Sadiq can. Saw that. Uh, as long as a hundred of us remain alive, we will in any conditions be brought on. We will not on any conditions. Never will we be brought under English rule. So there we are. In truth, not for glory, nor riches, nor honours that we are fighting, but for freedom and for that alone. See more. Absolutely, Dan. You're quoting from the declaration of our broth. So there you are. I do understand it. Wheeshed about the rugby, says Luke Jones. Luke's a Welshman. Ah. No, not da, yucky da, uh, my dear friend. Yes, lovely, lovely, and uh, lovely to have you with us. A tune says Jim Stephen Gibb. Yes, Jim Stephen Gibb. I will give you a tune shortly. I'm going to have a sip of tea. <coughs> Here we go. Seize the day. Can you all see that? Mm. Do you all see that the right way up? I'm just trying to do a bit of an experiment here. Oh, that is lush. Uh, wonderful stuff. Right, remember Satanta Sports, says Louis. Yes, we do. We remember it, yes. And um, the dragon got slayed, says Ian Walker. Well, of course, um, St. George, I think, is a mythical saint. I don't think he actually existed. St. Patrick with the snakes, he existed. And St. Andrew, of course, existed. Um, and St. David existed. Coming up soon, St. David's Day. And... Uh, Nicola Sturgeon needs to declare the second referendum soon, or I fear we will have a civil war. No, John Paul Preston, we will never have a civil war. That's not how the Scots do stuff. We might have some civil conversations, but that would be it. Uh, have a whiskey instead, Scotty, says Derek. <laughs> what do you think about the film Braveheart? Do you think it's accurate? I think with all Hollywood blockbuster movies, there will be elements of poetic license. So there you are. That's what I would say. Uh, right way up, but back to front. Ah, the right way up, but back to front, says Lynn. This is Seize the Day on my teacup. Chimero and Beath, says Julianne Scott. And Beath. So, what, have I said it right, Julianne? Yes, yes. Um, Chimero, Chimero and Beath. There you go. Have I said that right? And we'll never have a second end referendum. Never, says Louis Faber. Louis, I don't know where you're coming from. So it's all very well for you to be some sort of English nationalist, but I mean, we will have a second referendum. We could probably have it within weeks. So there's no never about it. And if you check your facts, you will wonder why you are resisting. So there we go. So, you know, have a think about it. Uh, nearly pancake day. I make them Scotty, says Jim Stephen Gibb. Excellent, the pancakes. The bosses of BBC Scotland Channel are expected to spend half their time in London, says Fiona Morag Graham. Yes, I would imagine they do, because they have to go down and speak to their bosses, their masters and lords who are in Broadcasting House in London, and do what they are told. So if you're having a very, very senior interview for something like the BBC, you know, the sort of overriding thing would be, can you do exactly what you're told when we tell you? 
you know. <coughs> so the, I think the interview for the chairman of the BBC uh, usually contains a question, could you sack the director general if it came to that? And of course, one or two have had to do that. Um, both times I thought it was absolutely shocking and quite wrong because they were wonderful director generals, the ones who lost their job. In fact, three, three times I'm thinking now they've uh, got rid of a director general. And the government should back off. Uh, there should be a terrific freedom. So there's too much interference. And that goes right back to the start of the BBC. The BBC was started as a British Broadcasting Company in 1922 by John Reith from Glasgow. <clears throat> and uh, as you know that, Charlie Farley says, Lewis, Louis is probably a Rangers supporter. <laughs> I don't think that's actually got anything to do with it, to be quite honest. So there you go, because your Rangers supporters tend to like to support the Crown. And the Crown is not up for grabs in any independence discussion. So the Queen will remain um, the Queen. So, so there we go. Good evening. I hope you're well, says Alex Robertson. Yes, indeed. Boo, says Dick Reed. Oh, boo, back to you. Thunder and lightning, Captain. Uh, started blowing a hooli, says George Raffin. It is blowing a hooli, George. You are quite right. Absolutely. I'm Rangers, says Dick Reed. Nothing wrong with that, Dick. We have everyone on here. David Hammond's watching. One of our fine broadcasters. Uh, John Tom says, loving it, Scotty. As always, the BBC are complicit in lies. Uh, find out from Professor John Robertson and the anti-yes propaganda from Dr. David Patrick. These are um, senior academics who were pointing out weaknesses in the BBC's um, journalistic integrity during and around about the time of the Scottish referendum. So there we are. I mean, I heard it firsthand myself. As I say, I was at my computer at the 10 o'clock news came on at the BBC and they said the first minister was asked a question he didn't answer, said the political editor at the time. And um, he had answered, given a very, very full answer. I'd heard him answer on another programme. So there you are. Did you watch the programme of what would happen if Germany won the war? It frightened the BGs out of me. You can't get a job without a registered address and you can't get a registered address without a job. Thus, no government will be able to eradicate homelessness, says Louis Faber. Well, we need to change that, Louis, and uh, put somebody under some kind of guardian and say, my guardian's address is as follows. So there we are. And um, all right, Scotty, but followed you for years, bud, says Andy Grant. Absolutely, Andy. A lot of people have. I'm in my 25th Silver Jubilee year. Now, I would love you to help and go fund me because I'm trying to raise £5 million to build an independent free media. Right now, you can laugh and laugh and laugh as much as you like. Don't worry about that. I've been laughed at a few times. That's why I gave up being a comedian because people were just laughing at me all the time. And I gave up in taxi driving because they were talking behind my back. So that's the thing. And I gave up my job in the helium factory because I thought I will not be spoken to like that again. So there you are. Uh, sorry to hear about uh, Billy McNeil's dementia. Um, so there we are. Uh, I wonder if heading a football caused it. My father got it, but he never kicked a ball in his life, says Ian. Fantastic programme tonight, Scotty, says Dave Hemsley. I thank you for that. Louise Sullivan, what channel was that programme about Germany winning <coughs> the war? Lol. I love that one. Says John Toms. Absolutely, John Toms. Not a problem at all. So, what we're looking at tonight, folks, if you've just joined us, a very, very warm welcome. You are looking at the world's top broadcaster, believe it or not. That is a fact of life. Scotty McClue, capital S, small c, o, double t, i, e. That's the Scotty, the McClue, capital M, small c, capital C, l, u, e. That is the McClue. What you have to do is tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 about Scotty McClue live each Sunday night on Facebook Live for one hour from 10 o'clock sharp through until 11 o'clock. Very, very important. Should we crowdfund buying the Scotsman with the business community? Crowdfund Scotty McClue and I will look into all of these things, right? We're looking for media businesses. Go on to GoFundMe.
and go on to the Scotty McClue page and read the whole brief. Watch the video. You'll see me sitting there in an open neck shut with a blue jumper. Forgive the casual approach and I will tell you all about what we're doing there. Uh, Bill Paxton, R.I.P. Apollo 13. Great film. What do you think, Scotty? This is Mark Nickel. Absolutely, Mark. And, of course, our condolences to Bill Paxton's family. Yes, a wonderful, wonderful actor. Such a shame. And a young man again. You should have your own show on BBC. A wee talk show, says Daniel Joseph. Well, the only thing is... I used to be never off the BBC, and then I asked somebody very senior in the BBC, why don't you have Scotty McClure? And they were absolutely over the moon about it. They were delighted. And then they shoved it up another layer, and the mockers got put on it. Interesting, isn't it? So there you go. And there's no reason to put the mockers on me. There's absolutely no reason to put the mockers on me at all, because I have a completely clear record in broadcasting stretching back almost 40 years. Tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10, 50 times, says Derek Reed. And also please tell all my friends who listen that unfortunately I lost my lovely wife, Teresa. So sad, says Andy Grant. Andy, I'm so sorry to hear that. And every strength to you and love to you and your family at a very, very difficult time. And I know it's very, very early days. There's nothing I can say that will bring Teresa back. But what I can say is that the wounds will heal and the scars will peel. And give thanks for having her with you. At least you knew her. Uh, I'd love to see your question time. That would be fun. Captain Sir George Raffin. Yes, absolutely. John Tom says, sorry to hear that, Andy. Have you ever thought about going back to being a newsreader, says Adam Fuller. Adam, my career has been absolutely wonderful. It's been extremely successful. And um, I went down the comedy route. I could have gone down the news reading route, gone straight to ITN, and I'd probably be reading the news on ITN yet. Uh, so there you are. So you may have had the news with Scotty McClue on ITN, but I have never, ever, ever regretted going down the entertainment route. How did the meeting go last week, Scotty, about you going more than once a week, says Steve Burrows? That's a big possibility, Steve. There's a few things. Sorry for just disappearing out of vision there, guys. Be back in a second. Mop down time. Absolutely roasting in here. Woo! The heat. I don't know what's happened. I think somebody's banked the fire up too much. Uh, the program was SSGB, says Andy Thompson. Yes, indeed. Would Scotty consider a change of career? A local MP, even First Minister, says Dan McWilliams. Well, I wouldn't put up with any nonsense, and I would share it all with you guys. That's the thing. Went to Brick Lane this evening for a bagel and hot salt beef. You ever been, Louis? Yes, Louis, I've been to Brick Lane and to Covent Garden and to all these places in London. Love it, says Peter Ewing. Yes, yes, says Peter Ewing. Jonathan Gold's watching. Jonathan Gold, one of our finest broadcasters, does a lot of work over in Cork in Ireland, and I love Cork. It's a place I could just, just go there and stay. And um, everyone's shouting, why don't you? Why don't you? But I could go to Cork. And I remember saying to Mother Half, I said to herself, I said, come on, we better go before the rush hour. And of course, I didn't realise there isn't a rush hour in Ireland. They don't rush. You got the heating on, Scotty, says Jim Stephen Gibb. I think what I did, Jim, the mistake I made, I jumped into the shower just before the programme. Jumped out again, of course. But um, I think just uh, it's a bit hot there. Right, so John Tom says, do us a favour, shout, Rebecca. Get out of that shower now. Your mum and dad are waiting for you downstairs. That's Rebecca. Out of the shower, my dear. Down to mum and dad. Uh, there's more mature people always crank the heating up. Says Tan well, yes, but I'm not mature. And I very often live with the heating off. Uh, so there you go. Um, excellent stuff. Now, how are we doing time wise? Oh my goodness me. I think I've got a built in clock, guys. Share time. Share, 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 share. Share, 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 share. Everybody share this video. And do a little bit of work. Please don't be afraid of work. Get typing go. Are you watching Scotty McClure on Facebook Live? Send people the link. Right click on it and send it out. It will work. <coughs> oh dear. I'm going to have another wee drop of tea here. Lynn K says you're overheating under the bonnet. 
I'll let you into a wee secret, Lynn. I'm a very, very warm person. And, uh, you know, so if you shook hands with me, I'm not all sweaty or anything like that. You won't get the wet fish handshake. You'll get a good, firm, manly handshake. But it'll be warm. Just telling you. First Minister McClure, we like it, says Charlie Farley. We're crying out for an independent news channel, says Fiona Cunningham. Well, come on, Fiona. Go and fund Scotty McClure. Send me a quid or a fiver. It won't hurt any of you to part with a pound or two. And uh, share 10 to 10 to 10 to 10 to 10 to 200,000, says Derek Reid. During lives, if everyone in Scotland gave a pound right now, we'd reach our target tonight. It's a thought, isn't it? So go to GoFundMe and also go and share it. Let's do that, guys. Every single one of you go on to www.gofundme.com. Yeah, get onto it on your phones, your tablets, anything else you've got. Put forward slash Scotty hyphen McClue. And when the page comes up, share it. Just share it. Don't do anything else if you don't want to. Just share it on Facebook and Twitter. Right, so let's all do that now. We'll go on to www.gofundme, all one word, dot com. Forward slash Scotty hyphen McClue. S-C-O-T-T-I-E hyphen M-C-C-L-U-E. The page will come up and you'll see, share this page on Twitter and Facebook. Share it. Thank you. Excellent. Fiona Cunningham and 27 others have shared the video. Let them know you appreciate it. We appreciate it very, very much indeed. Tune, 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 tune. What are your views on the sugar tax? Well, of course, I was brought up in the town where the sugar trade had built the town. Remember, Britain was very, very, very powerful. Yeah, very powerful. Uh, because they'd run slaves. They'd run the slave trade. So they are, fund you for what, says George Sylvie. George, get on and read it. Yes. And read the brief, fund me for an independent Scottish media. I'm looking for five million pounds. So there you go. And you can laugh and laugh and laugh, but in actual fact, we'll get it and it will work. It will happen because Scotty McClure can offer 40 years experience, 36,000 hours of live broadcasting in television and radio, all unscripted, never a script anywhere near me. Video sales, 36,000 video sales. 10 million people on Scotty McClure's website. That's just for starters. So there you go. Then there's all the social media. There's Google+. Plus. There's LinkedIn if you're a business person you want to connect with Scotty McClure, the world's top broadcaster, global broadcaster Scotty McClure. Go and do that. So there you are. So £5 million is actually very, very small beer for crowdfunding and for, uh, for commercial operation these days. But I would like to see Scotland have an independent media. It's very nice of the BBC to be setting up a new channel. But also remember that new channel is going to be about in time for Indiref. There's going to be a lot of news on it. So could it be perceived as a wooden horse of a channel for the Scots who are now decidedly looking at independence very, very seriously because of the way they've been treated with Brexit and by the Westminster government. Nay, bother, you're deluded, says George Sylvie. No, not deluded at all, George. If I was deluded, I wouldn't have been in this business for 40 years. You're the one who's deluded. So there you are. It's very, very interesting how people doubt, doubt, doubt. I mean, doubting Thomas doubted Christ when he met him. Christopher Columbus, they laughed at him when he said the world was round. Thomas Edison, they laughed at him when he discovered sound. And look where we are right now. So have a little faith. Make a leap of faith and go fund me, George Sylvie. There we are. Nay bother. Uh, so, uh, Scotty, would you ever do Big Brother, Charlie Farley? I got to the final of choices for Big Brother. I went down and auditioned at Arsenal Ground where the Gunners play. And um, they said, you've worked in television, haven't you? I got through to the final. I actually got in and got interviewed. And they said, you've worked in television. And um, I said, yes. I said, but I'm not going to let on. They said, we don't want to take the risk. And that was it. Scotty, when we get independence, the herring will be back, according to Parahandi, Fee Peter Heed, the herring marvellous. Well, I've said it for years, though. 
you know, that uh, the Scottish fishing and farming is absolutely vital. We must not let that become a Westminster political football. Very, very important. Well said, Scotty, says Dave Hemsley. I hope you have your CN, CV in for the new Scottish BBC channel, says George Raffin. Well, I had hoped I might be considered as the controller of BBC Scotland because we've just got a new controller appointed, but they went for an internal candidate. The BBC very often does that. Uh, so there you go. Scotty speaks his mind on radio and television, says Deke. Well done, Scotty, says Charles McLaughlin. A great pleasure, Charles. <clears throat> so there we are now. The BBC has also ruled out a Scottish six o'clock news programme called The Scottish Six. I can reveal right now that I am giving very serious consideration to bringing you a Scottish Six myself. Now, it would mean putting up with me reading the news for half an hour each weeknight at six o'clock sharp. So you'd have to think about that, but that's what we're looking at. You can't beat a good kipper, says Michael McGuigan, as long as it's not a you kipper. Absolutely. Uh, but there we are. No, and I smoked kipper from, from Margyle, from Tarbot, from Ardrishigan Tarbot. Anyone can cuddle, but only the Welsh can queech. Oh, Julianne, you'll have to help me out there, darling. Please do, Scotty, says Charlie Farley. Absolutely. And uh, that is marvellous stuff. Now, let's have another share. Share, 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 share. I'm laughing at uh, George Sylvie telling me I'm deluded because I'm wanting to raise money for Scottish broadcasting. <laughs> I think if I was deluded... I might have given it up a long time ago. I don't think I would have hung on for 40 years. Sounds great. At least it won't be fake news, says George Raffin. You're absolutely right. Uh, I've invited 200, says John Toms. John, that is wonderful. Thank you very much, because we are building an audience. And guys, it depends on every single one of you and the power of sharing. I can only do so much. I can only to all you beautiful horses to the water. I can't make you drink but if you share and share and share and share and share we will build a massive worldwide audience to this program <clears throat> so what about go radio in glasgow says deck i haven't heard any more about go radio deck and uh, they may get back in touch but i haven't heard any more about it at the moment happy sunday night scotty says ron stewart a very happy night to you a very happy all nights to all of you uh, go radio in glasgow says derek yes that's right um, I was tipped to join Go Radio last year, but we didn't hear any more about it. Uh, Scotty, if you were shipwrecked on an island, who would you like to be shipwrecked with? Uh, Boris Johnson. I would die laughing, he says. No, I think I would quite like maybe a couple of very attractive women to be shipwrecked with me. And then we could have intellectual discussions. To support Scotty is to support an independent media. This could make or break the second referendum. Scotty is worth every penny. Reach deep people. Let's show them we're willing to pay for our see more. Oh, it's always difficult because they're so tiny. For our freedom. So there we are. So John Paul uh, Preston says to support Scotty, and he has done. John Paul has supported me. Bless you, John. Uh, Independent media, this could make or break the second referendum. Scotty's worth every penny, reach deep people, and let's show them we're willing to pay for our freedom. So if every single one of you can go on the GoFundMe page, go to www.gofundme.com forward slash Scotty, S-C-O-T-T-I-E hyphen M-C-C-L-U-E. You'll see the page come up, share it. Everybody share it. And those of you who feel you can give something, please donate. <clears throat> Excellent. There's no such thing as a happy Sunday night. Work in the morning, says Louis Faber. Louis, Louis, you're needing to listen to a lot more Scotty McClure. Every night is a happy night. And even when things are as dark, remember it always gets darkest just before the dawn. And think of the happy times. And if you can't have what you like, try and like what you have. Very, very important. Jackie! says John Toms. Yes, indeed. A, a book is lies for end to end and the better together lies 
are never penned, says Ian Walker. Well, there you are. Oh, by the way, I've written a book. I haven't finished it yet. But chapter one, if you put in Scotty McClue delivers from evil on the YouTube channel, Scotty McClue YouTube channel, then you will get the first chapter of my thriller novel. Mm. Uh, do you think Scotland should be allowed to stay in the EU if Scotland had its own EU referendum? I think Scotland would like to be part of that big trading market because, you see, history comes into play here, Andrew. And politicians are very, 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 very poor with their uh, knowledge of history and reading their history books. They like to think they are in the moment. If you study history, then you know where we've come from. And that means you will find out where we are now and we can decide where we are going. So history, very, 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 very important. And I think that um, <clears throat> if the politicians did study their history, they would see that Scotland with the old alliance with France and even way before that, they traded with Europe, with the low countries, with the Benelux countries. If you go to East Lothian, or those of you who live in East Lothian in Scotland, you'll see the red pantiles. If you go down to South Yorkshire and to East Yorkshire, you'll see red pantiles on the buildings, all swapped, all coming over from Holland by boat, trading, trading, trading. This country really goes um, up and down rather than across the way. So it's very, very important. It's separated across the way. East Coast and West Coast are, are, are the main differences with each other. But up and down, you'll find the East Coast, the trading with the Low Countries. So Scotland's always traded with Europe. Uh, Karen Mackay is watching, dinky do. Uh, bring back the Vikings, says Derek Glasswell. Yes, absolutely, the Vikings came over. It makes me laugh when people say, I'm Scottish. If they actually um, expectorated into a cup and it was examined for DNA, they'd probably find they were from Africa. Scotty, the clocks go back soon. Is that you at nine then? No, I will be at ten, but instead of Greenwich Mean Time, it's British Summer Time. Scotty, long time since I met you, Scott FM. Loved your late night shows, says Andrew Stevenson. I love the late night shows as well. And we'll find out what happened at Scott FM because something a bit uh, strange happened there. Something a little bit untoward, I always felt. Uh, lol, says Ian Walker. Yes, indeed. And um, we're descended from Vikings. Look up the surname, says John Toms. Of course, absolutely. I'm, de I'm descended from uh, from the Vikings. The clocks go forward, Ian Walker. They don't go back. Yes, spring forward, fall back. They fall back in the fall. Uh, a wee shout out for Drummy Scotty, says Jim Stephen Gibb. Yes, and Jim Stephen Gibb, I did say to you, we would look at uh, a wee chin in the box, didn't I? Just for you. Um, so I do have the box here. I will try a tune for you. Uh, I'll have to move back a little bit to get some space. Give me some space. Give this man some space. <laughs> Tune for you guys and uh, Geese China Pig says Angie Thompson, Charlie Farley, yes, of course. And um, John Tom says Tom's was the king of the Vikings, but we stopped all the pillaging just only last week. <laughs> what happened to Scott FM? says Adam Fuller. That's just the question, Adam. I haven't yet found out, but I will do. Yes, absolutely, something. Very strange happened at Scott FM, and while Scotty McClue was absolutely at his height of doing his job properly, um, somebody came along and decided to put a stop to that. 
So there we are. Bravo, bravo, says Derek Kloss. Thank you, Derek. Yes, bravo, bravissimo. Now, share time, guys. Can we share, 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 share? Tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 about Scotty McClue. Live on the big one, Facebook Live. That is the world's top broadcasting platform. And here we are. Live on Facebook Live. So tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10. And I hope that you're um, texting people, emailing people, telling them all, McClue is on Facebook Live. Come and join them. Great tune, Scotty, says Dave. Smashing wee tune. Well done, says George Raffin. Uh, the best Viking was Tony Curtis. I think I would be quite good with sword and shield in hand. Yvonne Boyd McLennan gives us the thumbs up. Thank you very much. Scotty. What's your thought on the Lord Mayor's comment, says Stuart Hay? Now, am I not right in thinking that he's not the Lord Mayor? The Lord Mayor of London is a separate appointment for the City of London, and that he's the Mayor of London. Is that right? Um, and brush your teeth, Amy, and get to bed, says Daddy. So there you go. Uh, Scotty, my clock goes back because it's spring-loaded. Lol, says Ian. Excellent. My dad was real mugged thinking he was the real radio fugitive once. I was standing at Mount Florida Station one afternoon, and a guy came up and he went, Are you the real radio fugitive? And I said, No, no, I'm Scotty McClue. I work for another channel. <laughs> he ran off. Quite good. Uh, and then he had a look at me and went, Oh, so you are. <laughs> Is Scott FM's loss, Scotty? You can he keep the McClue down? Says Charlie Farley. Well, of course, Scott FM, after that, just died um, an unnatural death, and that was the end of it. And it's such a shame, because it was Scotland's finest radio hour, in fact, probably Scotland's finest broadcasting hour. I don't know, the launch of Scottish television in 1957. That was a cracker. That was a beauty with Lord Thompson, Roy Thompson. That was tremendous. And um, But Scott FM was probably the next one. The launch of Radio Clyde, 1973, that was a good one. The launch of uh, Central FM, or Centre Sound Radio, I launched that myself. That was a good one. Uh, the attempt to save L107, that was a good one. Shame it went a bit wrong, but nothing to do with my good self. And uh, all that sort of thing. So we've done many, many great things in broadcasting, but there's a lot more to come because we haven't even scratched the surface. That's why I say, go fund me. Say, this man has earned his con. We will fund him. Go to the GoFundMe page, put in gofundme.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClue and stick in a fiver. Excellent. Mr. Gracie, we must catch up. Loads of news and it's all good. Fantastic stuff. That's what we like. Absolutely, Mr. Gracie. Uh, let's have a share, guys. Share, 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 share. Lots going on. Um, I'll see what's happening. I uh, wanted to make tonight a good bit different and it has been a fabulous program guys because you are the people who make it right this is what it's about and i think this mainstream television could easily stand a program like this for an hour at night i think it'd be tremendous bbc scotland could take a program like this for an hour at night it would be tremendous so there you are and uh, independent television could take a program like this but the Scottish Six, I'm thinking in bringing that to you myself. It would be lovely if Scotty McClue managed to do what the BBC have failed to do. And, uh, you know, but you can help that there. The boat that rocks on the night, Scotty, did you know it was 15-year-old American schoolboy in the 1930s that first used the term DJ? I didn't actually know that, Ian, but I do now. Wonderful. I like that. So there we are. The Boat That Rocked is a tremendous movie. I went to the premiere and Richard Curtis came and spoke to us very kindly. Great guy, actually. Anything with Richard Curtis, anything that Richard Curtis has uh, produced or directed, tremendous, great, great guy. Love his stuff. All the stuff with Hugh Grant, Notting Hill and all that. He was involved in that, wasn't he? Uh, so there we are. The Boat That Rocked. That was uh, the story about the Marine Offences Act being in to try and stop the wonderful, wonderful young music revolution that was taking place on the boats. I have an uncle who knows you and speaks very highly of you always, not forgot you for helping him, says John Garvey. <clears throat> Marvellous, Johnny. That's great. Uh, you should do three hours like you did in the radio, says Steve Burroughs. This is a moot point, Steve. Um, we're going to have to just experiment with this and see what suits the people. I'd be quite happy 
to broadcast every night. And that may well be the next step, but maybe an hour, because it's in vision, is plenty for the audience. That's what I'm thinking about. My wee ma'am loved Hugo Duncan and Radio Ulster, on Radio Ulster, Captain. Yes, says George. George calls me Captain. Seriously, though, the mayor then, says Stuart Hay. Yes, I think these comments were very, very, very misguided and very, very, very unwise. And I tweeted the mayor and said, I would like your opinion, Sadiq Khan, on uh, Mr. Gandhi and Mr. Nehru and Mr. Jinnah and their desire for independence in 1947. So there you go. Marvellous stuff. Right, that's what we're talking about. But these comments um, by Sadiq Khan, I mean, it has opened a can of worms because they're just simply not the case. In fact, the complete antithesis is the case. Um, who else have we got here? Scotty, what about the uh, new BBC Scotland channel? What about a late night show on there when it launches in 2018? That will be up to finding out what the attitude of the BBC is to Scotty McClue. As I say, I once applied to uh, do a show on the BBC and they were absolutely over the moon. It caused tremendous excitement and very senior people were very pleased at the idea of Scotty McClue joining the BBC. And then it went up one layer and uh, everything just got dashed. Everything went quiet. So obviously somebody was not a great fan of Scotty McClue. What's not to like, I say? Well, Scotty, uh, there you go. My Oh, yes, here we are here. Great point, says Stuart Hay. Uh, what do you think of Jeremy Corbyn's comments? I will put my cards on the table here as to how I have observed this whole thing. The reason Labour have been kicked into the long grass in Scotland and nationally, but particularly in Scotland, is because they betrayed their roots and they betrayed the people. And they did not back Scottish independence. Now, we could have had a different story if the uh, lady who headed up Labour at the time had backed Scottish independence and just gone free of London, kicked over the traces and said, I'm sorry, but we're a Scottish party. We're not just a branch of you guys. And we've decided to back independence. She may well have been the First Minister right now. That's as simple as it is. And as soon as the, 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 the Brown speech, right, and the things that were not true in the vow. The fact that that so-called vow was just teetering with, uh, with uh, a lack of truth. The fact that the truth was misconstrued at the time uh, caused tremendous problems. And that's why Labour have been uh, sent to the wilderness and will probably stay there. And it's all very well for the London mayor to come up and make devastatingly insulting comments and wrong comments about Scottish people. Uh, you know, that was just simply wrong. So I hope that we get an apology. But, um, you know, you do have a highly intelligent man there. You do have a very experienced politician. So he must have known he was making these comments and that they would be inflammatory. But I didn't think he realised the depth of offence that would be caused, the depth of widespread offence that these comments have caused in Scotland. Uh, also, it's a good thing the BBC Scotland channel is more independent and Scotland gets you. Yes, absolutely. But the thing is, um, it would need to be, we'd need to be sure that we're not dealing with a wooden horse here. Did you not have a show on STV at one time? Yes, I used to do the overnights on STV. I used to read the news on STV. And I used to do the continuity and vision on STV. Labour are better off in the wilderness, says Lynn Kay. I remember you were the first voice on radio after Diana's death. Uh, you can get on at later than normal, about 12 p.m., your compassion was genuine and could be felt, says Andrew Stevenson. Yes, of course, I think what was interesting when the 9-11, uh, the Twin Towers happened, virtually every radio controller panicked and pulled their phone in. And that was the, the most wrong thing they could have done. Fortunately, I had a very, very switched on programmer and we kept our program 
and apparently the program was absolutely outstanding and at the end of it we played the two national anthems the british national anthem and the american national anthem and um, every day raved about that program a lady phoned in because her son was due to have a meeting at nine o'clock at the world trade center and his train got stopped in the metro uh, so there you are because of what happened um stuff the apology indy will do says Stuart Hayes. So there you are. Stuart's not looking for an apology from Sadiq Khan, the London Mayor. He says, let's just get independent and get clear of the whole lot of it. And then that would be rather good. I feel Mr Miliband did a lot of damage to the Labour Party by refusing to work with the SNP in the 2015 general election. Yes, I think the problem with Labour, there was a time you couldn't actually get a cigarette card, uh, a cigarette paper, that's an old term for you, between Labour and the SNP. And um, the SNP, I don't think, ever hated Labour, but Labour hated the SNP, so it was a love-hate relationship, you know. Um, Labour hated the SNP, and they loved the idea of Labour. And Labour, of course, uh, the SNP was born out of Labour, so they are effectively Labour's younger sibling. And they have grown up, uh, you know, the independence movement has grown and grown. If you read Flag in the Wind by the late John McCormick, the father of the late Neil McCormick, Professor Neil McCormick, the Flag in the Wind, you'll find out what was happening in 1928. And he went to see another McCormick, Colonel McCormick, who owned, I think it was the Chicago Tribune, and was welcomed with open arms. They did a lot. And also, uh, the Daily Express were big, big backers of Scottish independence because Max Beaverbrook, Lord Beaverbrook, who was, um, you know, a Scot of Scottish origin and uh, was in Canada. Uh, Max Beaverbrook ran the Express and they were big, big backers of independence at the time. So the Express was very much pro-independence. Uh, are we tuned before you exit, Scotty? Uh, so there you are. Did you not appear once on a debate show on STV hosted by Scott FM? Got a yes. I appeared on two, uh, several in fact. I think I appeared on three. Um, SCV programs. I was never off the television. We'll need to get back onto that. David Miliband was unhelpful, but Corbyn is a dried up leader. I don't know how he is a leader, says Andrew Stevenson. I've got a lot of time for Corbyn's ideas, and I suspect he's actually a very nice man, but he is surrounded by piranhas who are determined to eat him. And uh, dear knows what we'll be getting. So there's a lot of angry, angry people in the Labour movement all going about there just doing the Piranha Fish Act. Uh, Scotty's views from the pews coming soon to BBC Alba. Ah, uh, Sure, sure, Scotty. Scotty, were you ever on the buses? Says Ian Walker. No, but I had a friend who was a bus driver and he wore a cap like mine. And he was telling me one day that these two uh, elderly ladies had got on the bus and said, Oh, driver, you've got your banner on. You're like Scotty McClure. So there you go. Um, John Tom says, Jackie Harris is a legend, Scotty. You'll meet very few people who are genuine. Say hello to Jackie Harris. I will say hello to Jackie Harris. Not a problem at all, John Toms. Uh, and also, get rid of Trident too, Scotty, says Charlie Farley. Yes, I, I think it's unlikely that Scotland would want to use Trident at any point. The only thing is, it would take some time to decommission it. I mean, I've been very, very involved in the River Clyde in my life. One of my first jobs was on a Liberty boat. We used to go and take the American sailors off the uh, Polaris ship, which was based in the Holy Loch, and take them back to Guruk. And um, they were able to up anchor in a way quite quick when they decided to move bases. But I think it would take some time to actually decommission Trident. So I don't think it's an overnight job, guys. It's not a question of them just packing it all into a furniture van and disappearing. Um, but very, very interesting subjects for debate and discussion. Now then, uh, as I say, I am no political animal, so, you know, don't be trying to put a label on me or anything like that. I'm purely interested in the facts, and if you look at uh, all the stuff that has actually been hidden away over the years because of just how powerful Scotland is and because of the fact it could run itself and govern itself very very easily indeed to a very high standard uh so there we are 
And um, yes, John. John's dropping lots of names. I don't know these people, John, so I won't be reading out the names. Um, do you think getting Easter down to the same day each year, like Christmas, would help? Says Andrew Stevenson. Andrew, that's a very, very interesting one. Um, but we'll have to leave it for another time. Gregor G says, Dinky do, Scotty, and good afternoon from the White House in America. I salute you, sir. That's it. That's the end of it. Thanks very, very much for joining us. This is Scotty McClue. Go fund me. Share and share and share and share. Find out uh, all the social media Scotty McClue's on and make sure you share it from every single one of you. Have a great week. We'll catch up next week at 10 o'clock sharp next Sunday night. Until then, goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Take care, everybody, as you go. Goodbye, everybody of Wheaterzain. Au revoir and a cheerio. Scotty McClure has left the building. Dinky-doo!